Shabbos. We all know that the secret to telling a good joke is all about timing. Every comedian knows that. Between the setup and the punchline, you need a pause, and then you deliver the punchline. If your timing isn't right, it doesn't come out funny, no matter how funny the joke may be. It turns out that a lot of things in life are about timing, not just comedy. And one of the most serious things in life that's all about timing is leadership. And I just want to point out that leadership is not just for select people. Leadership is not even a choice. Everyone is a leader. It's a question of what your sphere of leadership is, whether it's your family, your friends, your community. But by definition, every person is leading and influencing other people. So what is the secret to leadership? It's timing. And we find it in this week's parasha. Moshe Rabbeinu, at the end of 40 years of leading the Jewish people, the greatest leader ever, he asks Hashem to appoint a new leader. And listen to his words. But first I have to preface that we know that there isn't even an extra letter in the Torah. There's surely not an extra word in the Torah and surely not an extra four or five words. So listen to Moshe Rabbeinu's request. He says, God, the, the Lord of all spirits, appoint a person over the congregation to succeed me. And how does he define who this leader will be? He says, nehem. He will go out before them. Lifnehem, and he will come in before them. Vasheyotziem, he will take them out. Vasheyivim, and he will bring them in. And then he concludes and says, so that the congregation of God should not be like sheep without a shepherd. And the question is, Moshe Rabbeinu says, appoint a leader who will go out before them and come in before them, who will take them out and bring them in. Isn't that repetitive? He just said. A leader who will go out before them and come in before them, bring them out and bring them in, who will go out, will take them out and bring them in. That sounds like he's repeating himself. What is the difference between a leader who goes out before them and comes in before them and who takes them out and brings them in? And here there's a very fine idea. And the idea is as follows. Moshe Bena looks back at his life and the fact that he can't go into the land of Israel, which was a result of hitting the rock which was a result of his frustration and anger with the Jews. What was the one failure of the Jewish people? They couldn't keep up with God's plan. They couldn't keep up with God's vision. And Moshe Benu was frustrated. Why can't we just go, as God directed us, from Egypt directly to the land of Israel? Why did you have to send spies and complain and all of these troubles that they went through? And looking back in retrospect, in hindsight, Moshe Benu realizes that maybe the problem was that he was too far out ahead of the people. The people weren't up to his level. Sometimes you lead, you ever go with a tour guide and the tour guide is so far ahead, you lose him. And he leaves the crowd behind. A good leader makes sure that people are keeping up with him. So Moshe Benin says spiritually, I'm ready to go into the land of Israel, but they're not. They're coming from Egypt, they're coming from slavery. And maybe my impatience and trying to lead them too quickly, not at the pace that they were ready to go, is what led to their failure, which led to my frustration with them, which led to my striking the rock, which led to me not going into the land of Israel. So listen to what he says to God. Appoint a leader who will go out before them, lead them. A leader has to lead. He has to go out in front and bring them in ahead of them. You always have to be ahead of those you're leading. You have to have vision. You have to have a, a direction to lead them to. But at the same time, Asher Yot Siem Vasher Yiviem. He'll make sure he's taking them out with him. Don't go so far out as a leader that people can't keep up with you. Make sure you're bringing them along. And that's such a powerful message in every sphere of leadership. Sometimes we get frustrated with people, whether it's our children or our students or our colleagues. Why can't you get with the program? Why can't you keep up? And the lesson Moshe Bain is teaching us is sometimes they're not capable of going at that pace. They're capable of achieving the goal, but sometimes you have to slow down and bring them along. You have to hold their hand. You can't just go out in a distance because you have the greatest ideas and visions, but they can't keep up with you. They can't see what you're seeing. So you have to not just go out before them and lead, but you have to bring them along as well. And the truth is, everything in life is about timing, as they say, but sometimes it's not in our timing, it's in Hashem's timing. And sometimes faith is about trusting Hashem's timing. I'll tell you a story. I was sitting at a Friday night table, uh, Shabbat table, uh, the other week in Israel, in Jerusalem, and there was a newly married couple there. So whenever you see a newly married couple, one of the first questions is, how did you meet? And they had a very interesting story. What was their story? Both of these Israeli bo- boy and girl, yeah, this couple, they just got married a few months ago. They were learning in a university in Israel, 
which is about an hour's drive from Yerushalayim. So whenever someone has to go into Yerushalayim, there's an app where they could say, anyone going to Jerusalem with a car, catch a lift. This girl had to get into Jerusalem to go home that day. So she put up on the app, anyone going to Jerusalem. And this boy in the college, who she didn't know, said, I'm going, you can get a ride with me. They got a ride together. There was a big accident on the road. They spent, instead of an hour on the road, two and a half hours. They had a wonderful time together. After he dropped her off, later that night he texted her and said, look, I really enjoyed spending time with you. Would you like to go out? And she wrote back and said, I'm sorry, but I'm in the middle of something now and it's complicated. I, I can't. And he took it as rejection. Like, oh, she's not interested in me. She gave me some story. Two years later, they were in the same shul on Shmini Atzeret. And as they're filing out, they bump into each other. And they say, oh, I haven't seen you. What's going on? And they start talking. And that night, he texts her again and says, uh, are you available now? And she says, yeah, I am available. And they started dating. And half a year later, they got engaged. And he said something very powerful. He said when he proposed to her, he said to her, do you remember our exchange by text two and a half years ago? And she said, yeah, I do. He said, I still have the text. I want to read it to you. And he pulled out his phone and he read to her how he wrote to her about maybe going out. And she said, I'm busy right now. She was in another relationship. And he wrote back and he said to her and he showed it to her in the text, I, oh, I feel like my timing is always wrong. That's what he wrote to her. And she wrote back to him and he read it to her at the proposal night. You wrote back to me and you said, if it's meant to be, Hashem will find a way to make it happen at the right time. And as I have a favorite quote of mine that says, believing in God is also believing in God's timing. Everything in life is timing, as they say. Hashem knows the right time. And as a leader, just like Hashem is patient with us, and waits for us to be ready. As Jay Bauer likes to say, that there's a Zen teaching that says, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. When we are ready, God appears for us. But we have to be the same way with others. We have to help people along the journey, not just expect them to keep up with us, but help them, like Moshe says, not just to lead from the front, but take them out and bring them in, hold them by the hand, help others finish and achieve their goals.